for the people who who's on right now, we're going to be starting about five minutes. Just uh, want to give people some time to to log in. For the people who who's on right now, we're going to be starting about five minutes. Just uh, maybe give you some time to to log in. If you guys have questions, you can post them in the YouTube video. Um, on YouTube video, I'll see them on here and I'll try to answer them as I go along. Um, we'll try to keep this thing brief. I know the biggest complaint with the last video we had was it was way too long. I think we ran like an hour and hour and twenty minutes or something like that. Uh, we'll try to keep this one short. If we miss anything, go to the old video. It should be posted on my website, djhighdef.com. Um, not that you can just YouTube it and Google it, so it should pop up. You post on my website, djhydef.com.
If you have questions, um, you can either post them in the event the event page, or you can go ahead and post them in YouTube comments. Like I said, for some reason, I'm not seeing updated YouTube comments, so I'll look on both both um, both pages periodically to um, to make sure that I'm answering all of you guys' questions. Um, additionally, this whole web conference is going to be recorded. Um, the link should be posted right after the video is over it. So um, just uh, just if, if, if you miss it or if you miss something, you have to go, just make sure to come back and check that out so you can uh, see whatever you missed. All right, so it's 3 o'clock right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and start. My name is Salim. Um, I go by DJ High Def. I'm the dude who made the... Uh, I'm, I'm the host of this this web conference. Um, I'm going to be taking you guys through my entire workflow, so you can see how I how I manage my music. From we're going to start from downloading the track all the way up to right before I play, and even sometimes even during when I play. Um, this works a lot for me. A lot of guys have used it. They said they like it. They re re look at the way they do their library because of it. Um, you don't have to do what we do in this video. These are just tips and tricks. Um, to, to help you better manage your system. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to start. So uh, before I start, well, I guess um, what we're going to start is I'm going to show you guys uh, my, my system, my system configuration. I know some of you guys have questions about how do I mess it some faster? How to make it work better? Um, this is what I have. Um, you don't have to get this, but you can. Um, I'm going to be going through um, everything about my computer. Um, this is a new computer um, from the last one we had in the last video. Unfortunately, right around um, Christmas last year, someone stole my stuff. And um, I had to re update, re, re get brand new stuff. But that means that special shout out to Serato, special shout out to Rain, and all my supporters who helped me fund. Getting my gear back it means a lot to me. All right, so we're gonna start and um, show you guys my hard drives. So in this system, I have two solid state drives, two Samsung Evos, 250 gigabyte drives. Um, they're they're not set up in a RAID like the last one, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, I replaced my CD-ROM drive and put another hard drive, a secondary hard drive, as you can see right here. Here's the first hard drive, which hosts all my um, my system, my operating system, things like that. And my second hard drive, which is right here, um, hosts my music. Um, I keep them separate in case of a, a data failure. Some people, uh, they have a secondary laptop in case the system crashes. So what I do is I have my OS and on one hard drive and then my music on the second hard drive so that if my OS crashes, my music will be fine. I can just reinstall my OS when I get back home or something like that or boot into a SD card and still be able to run my music. Right? Um, I have also 16 gigs of RAM, two um, 8 gig sticks. Now you don't need 16 gigs. 16 gigs is a, is an overkill for some. I like it. I do like a lot of multitasking so this works out for me. Also, this is the max amount of memory that you could have in this MacBook Pro. This is a Mid-2012 uh, MacBook Pro non-Retina. I don't use the Retina Max because um, the, uh, the pieces are soldered into the board. So if something goes wrong, I can't fix it myself. I have to take it to an Apple specialist or Apple guy. And I don't want to go through all that. I'm pretty IT savvy and replace rent is pretty easy. You know, just pop them in. So this this is a good setup for me. I recommend this setup. Anybody get a new Mac, I tell them always get the mid-2012 Mac if you can find it. Um, and yeah, that works. Um, just to show you just how fast my computer is, um, there's this app called Black Magic Disk Speed Test. Basically, it tests to see how fast your hard drive is. This matters for read and write. So um, if I'm running music, right, a standard music file at 320, um, quality is about, I don't know, about 11 megabytes, give or take. You know, videos may be up to like 200 megabytes, depending on how high, high quality they are. Um, the ability for your computer to read this and write it, read the read the file and write it as you know, making changes or scratching or whatever, um, is big. A lot of you guys, you load up a track, it takes a second to load, or as you're playing it, 
Um, it pauses while it's loading up and then comes back. That's because you have a slower hard drive. Um, this Mac is, I mean, these hard drives are rated at 400 read and write. Again, these are SSDs. They're not too bad. This is this is excellent as far as speed goes. I don't have to worry about lagging or anything like that, right? I'm reading my tracks. I'm reading my music. I'm reading the other stuff. Programs are running. All these things are happening at the exact same time. So fast reading write speed is definitely a big deal, right? I'll close that up. Um, I'm gonna go over you got go over my my menu my menu apps. As you see, I got a, I got a bunch of them. Um, I'll, I'll start a. Our, our goal. This right here is a, a script, a scripting folder. This isn't necessarily a menu app. This is more along the lines of script that's installed in your computer. If you open up your uh, Apple script editor, this is installed on every single Mac, by the way. Um, this will pop up. And this is how you make a little scripting, you know, this and fifth. I'm not going to get into that. But if you go here to preferences, and then go to show script menu and menu bar, this thing will pop up. And this is good because if you have automations or if you have scripts that you run on your machine, um, you put them in this folder into your user folder like that, and they um, you can just run it from here without going through the whole automation process. I'll get into what automation is, um, how to use it, how, to, how it can work for you, things like that later on, right? Close all this stuff up. Is there any questions about that? Okay. All right. Um, the next one is Hazel. Hazel, I, I love Hazel. Hazel is another automation style program. What it does is you get to put rules on folders. So if I open up my Hazel, I have a rule on my downloads folder for each one of my here's my downloads folder. Um, these are my five folders. Here are my four rules. Um, the rule we'll be looking at most is I'm not a music rule. Basically, it says that if any song, if any file is a music file, move it to this folder. This helps me keep my downloads folder um, clean. You don't want things to be cluttered. I'm, 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 I'm a big, big neat freak when it comes to the computers. So, you know, the cleaner this thing is, the, the easier it is for you to find stuff, the, the more smooth your your, your workflow is. So I highly recommend downloading Hazel, running this rule here in the settings for it. You can take a screenshot and, and put it on your system later on. Um, here's my music folder with all my tracks in it. I just cleaned those out not too long ago, but uh, I'll go over um, the the music scan, the music scan scripts in a minute. That kind of it needs this to to run, right? So. Let's go ahead and close that. Um, the next one is feeds. Feeds you don't really need. This is just something that I like. Feeds is a RSS reader. Um, right now I have it set up to to Tech Tools, um, Serato, and Rain. Big shout out to both those guys, all three of those guys. Um, anytime they come out like new tutorial or new post, I get like a little a notification here. It lets me take a look at it. So I make sure I'm up to date and I'm I'm constantly um, staying up to date on things that they put out. Right, I recommend doing that too. You can get these apps from the App Store. Um, this app right here is called Alfred. Now, if you guys use um, Finder, this is what Finder is. It's basically like a Finder on on steroids. So if I want to use, I pull up. If you hold Option and press Spacebar, this box will pop up. And from here, you can launch, run, search anything in your computer. So let's say I want to do iTunes. Pops up there. If I want to run Scratch Live. Pops up there. Serato. Pops up there. If I want to Google search something, I can search from here. So on and so forth. Um, it's a great little app. It helps my productivity up so much. I use it every single day, all the time. It, it, it makes it simpler for me instead of like searching in my programs folder or trying to find that one file. I can just type it in here and look for it. You know. Uh, this is an app called Caffeine. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of it or not. What Caffeine does, it is basically it, it toggles letting your Mac stay awake or going to sleep. Um, if I'm DJing or whatever and I'm not touching my Mac, I'm not touching the turntables, after a while my, my screen will go dim and eventually shut down. I don't want that to happen. So every time I'm playing, I always run Caffeine and it just keeps everything open and active. 
small, simple thing, you know, not a big deal. Again, this is my preference. You can use it if you want to. I find that it works for me a lot. Um, this is my Google Voice app. Basically, um, my cell phone. All my uh, all all the uh, numbers on my business cards and everything are attached to my Google Voice number, as well as all the phones that I have, like my work phone, my my cell phone, my office cell phone. So if a client needs to contact me, they can contact me via Google Voice, and all my phones will ring depending on where I'm at. If they send me a text or a voicemail, it'll pop up here, and I can respond to it from my computer, um, which is great because if I'm busy right now, I need to just send a quick text. I can just type it in there, shoot it out. Um, this app. Let's see. Yeah, Alfred works with everything. I mean, external drives are. It, it, it works the exact same way um, your Finder does. It indexes. It indexes your um your hard drive. So as soon as you plug something in there, it'll scan out a hard drive, find out what fo what files are in there, and um keep a little database. You can refresh the database in Alfred. Um, me personally, I don't really use it for my external hard drives. I just basically use it for my internal drives. I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, the next app is Memory Diagnostic. This app is amazing, right? If you have low memory or even like a lot of memory, you want this app on your computer. What it does is this: when you the way the way um this system works is your memory. The best way to explain memory as opposed to hard drive space is. Let's just say you you are um, a handyman, right? And you have a big toolbox <clears throat> in your garage that has all your tools and everything you need. That toolbox represents your hard drive, all your files, all your folders, everything's in there. Now you have a tool belt with um, the tools you need right now. That tool belt will, will represent your your RAM. The bigger your tool belt, the big the more RAM you have, the faster you can access those tools because they're right there on your person, right? Whereas supposed to have a little bit of RAM and a lot of disk space, you have like what maybe a two-slot tool belt. You have to constantly go back and forth to the to your garage to get a tool if you need it, which makes you a little bit slower. So it's always good to have more RAM on your machine because it's more available memory for doing what you're doing. Like if I'm in Serato, I'm running a program, I'm running a file in Serato, I'll play the file, and if the file's 11 megabytes. That is getting loaded up into memory. When I pull the next file, the next one's going to be loaded up into memory. And after a while, the memory gets congested with all the stuff you're writing at the exact same time, and the computer slows down. So everyone says you want to speed the computer, get more RAM. What this program does, it basically, it after a while, your memory gets filled up. Um, it just fills it up and gets rid of the stuff you're not using and cleans it out. So it cleans out your memory. Um, I do this all the time. It's quick. It's easy. It's on the App Store. Um, it tells you how much memory you have um, free, or well, not how much, how much how much memory you're using rather. And um, this is all you have free, right? So grab it, download it. it it's great. Um, this is basically a VM that's not involved in this process. Um, this app is called Better Snap Tool. What this does is so basically, if I open up a folder, right? It pops up right there in the middle. But I want to put it in the corner over here. Well, instead of taking this thing and resizing it, whatever, just take it, grab it to the edge, and it snaps it. Grab it to the corner, snaps it. Right? So that makes things easier for me as far as staying organized on my desktop. If I want to just have a couple things open and not have them um, cluttering my desktop, that works for me. It's a productivity tool. You can get it if you want it. If not, you know, don't worry about it. Um, this tool is an app called FreeSpace. It basically monitors the amount of space on your hard drive. I have two 250 gigabyte hard drives, so keeping making sure that I have enough space on my computer is a big deal to me. So I'll monitor this thing all the time. If I download a song, if I download a movie or something like that, I forgot to take it off a bit. I'm like, hey, you know, you're kind of running low on disk space. Go ahead and delete some stuff. All right? Anybody have any questions on that? Uh, Nope. Okay. Um, this is SCM fan control. Basically, just monitors um, the temperature of my laptop and fan speeds. It's a it's a cool DJ app when you're normally DJing. Um, your laptop gets hot. You don't want it to overheat, so you can set this thing for all right. You know, higher RPMs or what I have a custom thing DJ mode, which basically maxes everything out as you see it goes up. And if you can hear it, my fans are starting to push now. Right. Great app. 
um, Dropbox, and my Google Hangout tab, which I'm running right now. And it's just a reminder, right? So these are my little menu bar apps. Um, look them up. Um, see which ones you like, which ones you don't like. If you need a link to any of them, just hit me up on Facebook or you know, post in the cutting room. Um, I'll go over those. Um, let's see. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna. Oh, one more app I forgot to talk about is the app called Fluid. Now it's a five dollar app. It's not on the app store. You have to get it all online. But what Fluid does is it makes web apps, right? So I'm always downloading tracks from my record pool, but I don't always want to go through my. I want to keep what I'm doing in my record pool that window separate from my other windows like my Facebook or you know whatever. So Fluid lets you make an app based on whatever website you normally go to. So I have again this is Alfred I'm using to run this an app called Club Killers, which is just a a separate window that acts like a program for my uh, market pool, right? And opens them just like that. I have the same one for my website. It opens up similar to a. This is almost like a browser because I'm working on my site, but it um it's a separate app. You know, like for me, it keeps things kind of clean and organized. You can use it if you want to. You don't have to use it. It's up to you. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and start with this uh this workflow. So let's just say it's Friday or Thursday or whatever, and I need to get some songs for the weekend. Log into my record pool. You know, let's uh. This is how I would do things. Right, I found a track I'm downloading. For now, I'm just gonna get some random tracks. I'm not really worried about it. Um, let's get this track. Right, I don't know if you guys can hear. Let me take off this. Right. So I found a track that I want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and download it. Now before I download it, pay attention to this little area up here, because remember we have that program Hazel. Running a rule that says that anytime a folder is, anytime a music folder, it runs into my download folders, it'll move it to the music subfolder, right? So I'll download this track. It'll go ahead and start downloading, and then you should see like a little notification pop up right there. File was moved, yada yada yada, to that particular folder. To kind of show you what's happening. Um, if I go here to downloads, right? Downloads here, put this over there, and then bring this down. So go here, and then here is my music folder, right? So let's get another track. Let's get um, Rosa Parks, like it. right? Download it. I'm gonna download the clean version as well. And as you can see, the tracks pop up here, and then they get automatically moved to this folder, right? It's really, really cool. It's really efficient. Um, I like it. I don't have to worry about, all right, well, you know, I downloaded a bunch of tracks. Where's my tracks at? Where's that one song I downloaded? It's always all right there. Um, again, the program is called Hazel. Uh, take a look at it if you can. It's really, really useful. Does anybody have any questions on that? Nope. All right, cool. So after I download all my tracks for that particular day, I'll quit Club Killers, right? And um, the next one I'm going to run is my, my music scan. Now, to show you what music scan is, I'm going to have to pull up Automator, right? And just go to a new document. Close this. So I'll open a recent music scan. Now, a lot of you guys have questions about Automator. Um, do some reach on it, research on it. It can definitely help out your, your DJ workflow. Um, it basically allows you to make applications. Now, um, a better way to put it is, let's just say every single time I, I do something, I, I run this program, I play this sound, I make this notification, it's constant, right? So instead of me click, click, click every single time, I'm going to make an application that when I click it once, it just runs all three of them. 
like a like a little task task thing, right? In my automation, it tells me title of it, music scan. Um, it finds all the music in the music folder, the, the dot two music folder, right here, two dot music folder. And I'll put this over here. Right, the music folder, and it makes a new folder in my music hard drive over here. Um, is music scan folder it makes a new folder, music four, and then it dates it and it gives it the time. Now, the reason why I have it dating it and giving it the time is because I can run this script at nine o'clock in the morning. To get all the tracks from the other day, and I can run it again at three o'clock for any new tracks I downloaded in between those two times, right? So just make sure there's no conflicts there. Um, after it does that, you see it stops. There's no more. It doesn't continue on. It stops here, and then it finds the folders again in the music folder, and it sends them to the trash can. So it copies the folder, it copies the music to this folder, and then it moves whatever's left here into the garbage. And then it displays a notification saying it's completed. After that, it asks me if I want to launch Mixed and Key because I always scan my tracks in Mixed and Key after I after I download them to make sure my keys and my tempos up to date. And then it launches the program. So to kind of show you how this thing would run, let's go ahead and close this. These are old ones. Get rid of these. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run my DJ scan. Now, did you see that, how fast that was? It cleared out this folder, moved them to this folder, all of these tracks, and deleted the folders out of there. Um, this, to me, is like one of my most useful automations. It, um, I'm constantly downloading new tracks and being an open format guy. Sometimes I'm like, all right, I'm downloading a bunch of twerk tracks today. And then later on today, I got to download some R&B, maybe some house music, you know, some EDM. But I want to make sure I keep all these things separate so that I'm not mixing genres in my organization process. So running this program just lets you clean all this stuff out and keep everything in folders, named and organized, and all that other stuff. Um, I'm super OCD, if you guys can see, when it comes to automation, when it comes to keep making sure my computer's clean. So these things work out for me. On top of that, because I have two hard drives, one that hosts my OS and my programs and stuff, the other one that hosts my music, this automated moves all the stuff to my music hard drive. So my main system is not going to be flooded with new tracks, if that makes sense to you, right? So anyway, we ran this little music scan thing. Um, now we're going to launch Mix and Key. Mix and Key pops up. Um, I just go to Add Files. My music scan folder is already pre-selected. Just click that, click Open, and it starts organizing. All right. So just to show you how fast this process would normally be, let's quit this. Let's take all of these tracks and move them back to. Just download them back there. Delete this. Got the tracks right. So I just downloaded the tracks, it just moved them over. I run this script, new scan. It does a lot of other stuff for me. Launch mix and key. Okay. Add files and then open. And then there we go. That's it. All right, so I just went from downloading tracks, organizing them, put them in another folder, and scanning them in a matter of seconds. Right? Shaving these little bit of seconds off your entire workflow will speed everything up. Right? Once this is done, close this. Now I know that that folder for that particular day is all set up, scanned, and ready for me to use whenever I'm ready to use it, right? Does anybody have any questions on um, any of that stuff? Yes, you can. You can. You can also set up. Um, you can set up a uh, what do you call it? Um, a folder option. To, to move that as well if you want to or you can set up your know, when you when you download a song you download a track to automatically move it to that folder you can do that if you want to however not every music folder not every music file you download you're gonna want to add to your library 
You might want to download a, a mix that someone posted just listen to it later, or you may want to download a um a test track just for your own personal listening, um, your own personal viewing, whatever. Um, this is I set it up this way so I can distinguish one thing from another. But yeah, you can use the purposes if you want to. Um, I guess in here, I just started using Chrome, but there should be a setting about where to put whatever you download into whatever folder it's in there, right? But um, the answer that's that's the answer to your question. Okay, um, so we just did that. We just downloaded all of our tracks, and now it's in the folder, waiting for us to import, right? Let's see if there's anything I need to go over before I get into the iTunes part of it. Nope. All right, cool. So now we're going to go to iTunes. Now, contrary to my first video, my first video I use iTunes and I use Serato to manage my folders and my crates. Now I just completely use iTunes. iTunes is an amazing program. A lot of people hate on it. Um, I've been using iTunes since the beginning. The way I see it, if you understand how to use iTunes, it's probably the best tool in the world. It will save you money, um, and it will do almost anything you need to do for you. And I'm going to show you some of those things today. So let's run iTunes. And here is my iTunes library. Um, some people, when you first open up iTunes, you're going to get it. It's going to look kind of like, let's see, hide that, hide the sidebar. It'll look something like, like this. And, you know, that's not really the best for, for me. For DJs, I don't think so. So you just click Songs, and then you go to View, Show Status Bar, which is a little bar at the bottom. So you how much you got. And then um, Show Sidebar. So it shows your playlist. That's how you get the original view back. Um, this thing at the top is something that I set up, and I'll go over that in a minute. But um, this is how you get back to the original iTunes view. My iTunes settings. Go here to preferences, um, import settings. They're set at 320, right? I don't need to explain why you want your songs to be imported at 320, but that's what it is. Now, this matters if you're going to go ahead and encode a new track, convert it from one format to another format, or if you're going to be importing it from a CD. Um, besides those things, any song you put into iTunes is going to keep whatever you know bit rate it had prior to you putting it in there. Um, some people believe that when you use iTunes, every song off of iTunes, you have to buy from the iTunes Music Store. I don't know why that is. You just drag your song into iTunes and host it. iTunes is basically like a, a library for your music, fo music files, right? Anyway, so here's my iTunes. Um, this is the way it's set up. Um, my iTunes folder settings, it's located in my music my music uh, hard drive, right? So go here, here's my iTunes music folder, right? It's not in its default location, I changed it. Um, you can find a tutorial online on how to change it, just to kind of give you a quick overview of how you would want to change it, how you could change it. If I went ahead and went to this program's applications and went to iTunes, and I hold Option, hold the Option key, and then double click it, it'll tell me to choose which library I want to pick. I either make a new library in a different location or choose an existing library. Right? Since my library's already chosen and moved, I don't have to do that. I'll just open it up as is. Right? So here's my library, right? In this system, we're gonna be going over um, uh, my two uh, my two different categorizations, my library management folder and my Serato library folder, right? First thing we'll talk about is the library management. Here are my little sub crates, I guess crates in iTunes. These crates are mainly used for me to manage my music, to manage my tracks, to rate stuff, to edit stuff. That's what these are for. Um, Serato is set up a little differently, but I'll get to that in a second. That's set up more the way you would set up your crates, um, and whatever, whatever crate structure you have. But this is just to manage it, right? The folders we'll be looking at, um, and this folder is new music folder. Um, I guess the blogs folder if you want to, your ideas folder. Personal, these are tracks that I like, that I want. Um, that's not necessarily the tracks that I DJ with. Um, rated tracks, and then I guess everything else is just whatever you want. But these 
top tracks, I guess, a good one, right? So since we just downloaded a bunch of new songs from here, right? The way I manage, um, the way I import my songs is I have this folder called New Music, right? You take this folder, you open it up, and then I have it sorted by date, by month, and by time, right? I open each, each one of these, time, by month, and by date. I'll start with the by time one. This hosts three smart playlists, right? I'll show you what they are. This one is the last 24 hours. So this is any track that I just added to my library within the past 24 hours. You know, the reason why I have this is if I'm downloading a bunch of tracks and I want to review them or listen to them on the go, I just pop into my last 24 hours playlist and listen to that, right? I have one of those um, iPod classics, the big 160 gig ones. So all my library stays with me at all, all times. And when I'm at the gym or from the car, wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at um, I can listen to my, my my songs without searching through, you know, hundreds of thousands of tracks. It's all organized based on when it was added, right? So this is the last 24 hours, last two weeks, and then last 30 days, right? I can see the playlist gets bigger, you know, as the time goes on, right? The next one is by month. Now these are also smart smart playlists. Um, this one works. Well, for me, um, because different month based on the month that you're playing at, or you know, you know, I guess the season you can say, um, you get different different feels. You know, during the summertime you get like a lot of festival music, really big party anthems. Whereas so around the winter time you get kind of more chill, relaxed tracks. You know, you could say. So by having this sort of by month, I can kind of sort music by the vibe of that particular month, right? Plus, if I'm downloading a bunch of tracks. Um, I know, all right, you know, I download these tracks in March. Let me go see my March tracks. All right, here are these tracks that I downloaded, you know, so on and so forth. Um, here are ones from last year. I can find out, okay, April of last year, this is what I downloaded for that particular month, all right? That works for me. I've been using that system for about a year now, and it works flawlessly, right? Um, the next one is by date. Now, this is a little bit more, more down to the nitty gritty. Right, this is where I add my tracks at. So I'll go to June. So June twenty first. This is these are the tracks that I downloaded that day. Right, if I want to go to let's say two thousand thirteen July fifth, these are the tracks that I downloaded that day. Right, and some of them I rated, some of them I don't. Here's some rhythms I listen to. Um, this to me I think is the most useful system you know that I've ever used. Um, one of the big things that I, I kind of run into is like, man, you know, I'm opening, I'm doing an opening set for this dude, you know, next month. I'm trying to play tracks from last year, year before that, but I don't want to burn any tracks. I don't really have those playlists anymore. How can I search and find all right the tracks that I downloaded, when did I download them or like um the tracks from this particular time frame. This helps me out. You know, um right now I only got it set for two years when I started using the system last year. But you can imagine how useful this would be if you use the system for like five or, or ten years. You can go back and see exactly what song you added to your library on what day, however many years ago. All right? It's not that hard to make these little folders, little subfolders. Um, the iTunes I'm using is 11.2.2, which is the, the newest one. I keep my system completely up to date. Oh, by the way, um, I'm using Mavericks 10.9.3. So guys who scared about Mavericks. And you know the newest iTunes, you should be fine, right? This is what I use do every single day. It works great for me. Um, no, no, no complaints there. But yeah, so this is how I manage my individual tracks. Now, as you can see, some dates that have duplicate dates, right? These are for when I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to the record pool on let's say the fourth, and I'm downloading a bunch of tracks. But I also need to download like a bunch of like soca tracks that day. So I'll make a separate folder and label it Soka, and these are the Soka tracks that I downloaded for that particular day. And it's not combined with the regular tracks I got from the record pool, right? So if I like, I want to hear my twerk tracks from the from the six, hear my twerk tracks on the six. Um, this work out great for you if um, let's just say you went on like a twerk binge or like let's say a reggae binge last week, and you got a gig coming up and you need to find those tracks quick. They're right there. You know, sorted, ready for you to listen to. 
So let's add the tracks that I just added. Today is the what, the 22nd. So I'll go here. New playlist. June 22nd. Bop. Take these tracks. Bring them into there. All right? So now those tracks are sorted by their particular date. Um, another thing that you want to do is make sure your tags are good. I cannot stress that enough. Like Tags are the key to a, a good library. You need to have legit tags. Um, there's another tag system that another DJ developed a couple years back, you know, the code system. Um, I, have a I have a link to his post on in a cutting room Facebook group. I post it up on my Facebook as well. I mean, on my, uh, my website as well if you guys want to check that out. Um, I like his tag system. I think it's an amazing, I forgot this, this dude's name, but it's an amazing system. Um, I use his system, but with a little bit of a change. I kind of edit it to be a little more, 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 work better for me. You can use his, you know, tag code system. You can use my code system. Is up to you, whatever works for you. The, again, your library is for you and you alone. So find what works best for you and go with that, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is like, all right, you know, I want to take out this crap out of my comments. I want to take out all these, you know, edits that, these tags that I don't necessarily need. Um, some people like to put a whole bunch of trash in here, like their Facebook or they're like, they'll, they'll put their name on every single tag, all other stuff. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? More power to you if you're doing that promotion wise. Me personally, I just immediately take it out. If you're going to put your name anywhere, throw it underneath the composure tab. That works out for me. No one uses that. You know what I mean? But don't, don't fill up the rest of my, my tags with your, your promo stuff, you know? Anyway, so let's take these tracks. Let's clean them up real quick. So we're going to select all of them, go to get info. We're going to click the comments button. When you click this, it's saying commit whatever changes you put here to all of these things. So since there's nothing here, I'm going click this little button. I'm committing an empty space there, right? Um, to kind of show you what's about to happen. As you see how here, there's um, all these things in the comments. If I was to go to one and go to get info, see it right there? There's no check mark. Select all of them, get info, there's a check mark, and there's nothing there because they're all different. So I click that little check box and I press OK and it cleans them out. All right. Another thing that I'll do is um, I don't like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stickler when it comes to genres. You know, what's a genre, what's a subgenre, what's a legitimate genre, if the tag, if the, if the tracks are tagged correctly or not. Um, so I'll change this. Now, one of the things that I change is I don't like this little, Dash, I make it to that track, right? Look, it's cleaner for me. Also, I keep my tags alphabetical. So that's how I want it to look. Press OK, changes it up, right? Do the same thing to this track. Copy that. Paste that there, right? So keeping your tags clean will, will, will benefit you in the long term. Um, you don't want your library to look like, like this. See how all these are tagged nicely and neatly, but towards the end, well, I'll just go here to, to artist. Towards the end, you'll get like all this crap. Like these underscores, these little, there's no artists, artists like tag that, all this other crap. You don't want your library to look like that because it's going to be hard for you to find songs when you're playing. The cleaner, the better. Um, that works better for, for everyone, I think. Um, Anyway, so we go back to these tracks, and I want to change up these little like intro, clean, outro, party break stuff like that. You know, I have a system for that. Um, this is what I, I'll change it to. So instead of having intro, I'll go into, I'll clear this out, and I'll go to star CL for clean, star IN for intro. That's the way I do um, those tracks. Now, you don't have to do it this way. There's no benefit. It's just what I like. It looks neater to me. Also, when I look at, you know, the big list of all my tracks in my library, I can say, all right, fine. These five tracks have not been edited by me. This one has been looked at. You know, I got my changes on it. It works best for me. Now, does everybody want to go to each one of their tracks and edit each individual track by itself? No, that's going to take forever in a day. So what you want to do is you want to mass edit all of these tracks, right? One program that a lot of people use is Meta Bliss. 
It's a great little ID3 tag editor. It's made by the guys who make Mix and Key. I used it for a while, and I'm like, okay, drag them in there, read the songs. I can go ahead and make little changes, mash change everything. You know, works out great. Um, the thing I don't like about MetaBliss, well, first of all, there's nothing wrong with it. But me personally, I like my every system that I use to kind of be in my workflow. I don't want to use another program to do what the original program can do. So how can we go ahead and have iTunes mass edit all of these, these um, tracks? There is, and I'll pull up a site. There is a guy called Doug, right? And Doug makes these, these Apple scripts. These Apple scripts are, are amazing. I can't stress how great these things are. They basically are plugins for your iTunes, and they supercharge what iTunes can do, right? One of the things iTunes can do is if I take these tracks, select them all, here's my little script icon. You see this is one for my system. There's one for iTunes. Click it, and I go to, all right, these are all my scripts. Um, I'll, put a, I'll post a link in my, on my web page with all of these scripts on there. You can actually go into Doug's little website and pull them yourself with instructions on how to install them. Um, these are the ones that I use. This works for me. Um, one of the things that I use all the time is this proper English title capitalization. What that does is, let's say you got a track like this, right? And oh yeah, it's like that, right? It got to be, everything got to be all caps. You know, I don't know why people do that, but whatever. Um, let's go ahead and change that with a proper English title capitalization. Um, Go to modify and boom. No more or caps. Um, if you got a bunch of tracks, let's say like let's see if I can find some that I, I messed up. I guess I cleaned all these already. Yeah, but um sometimes dudes just capitalize everything. I guess they think it gives them more exposure or whatever. I don't know. But if you want to clean that up, that script does that, right? Um, let's go ahead and replace these little things. So we're going to go here, and we're going to find this little script called search and replace tag text. So I click that, pops up, and I'm going to choose name. And I'm going to search for intro. And I'm going to change it with my special intro, which is star, star, I am. I'm going to run a dry run first, which is basically going to say, all right, this is the changes it's going to make. So proceed. It's going to change that to look like that. Change, can I make this thing bigger? This to look like that. You see I make all these little changes here and there and there? If I agree with the way that looks, close this, take off dry run, and proceed. And it makes my edits right there. Five tracks are changed. All right, do the same thing with my clean. To star CL, proceed. Same thing for dirty. Star dr. And there, my tracks have now changed. Awesome, right? Um, this little thing does the exact same thing MetaBliss Meta does. Um, only thing is this is free. This is not. So you get whatever you think is works best for you. Um, I like this. This works out great for me, and um, this is what I use. Um, another script that I use is uh, this tag, that tag. You can change. All right, I want to put the name. Let's go ahead and uh, select one track. So this tag, that tag. Take the name and add it to the artist with this in between, right? Or take whatever tag to whatever tag and proceed it, right? Um, you can use it if you want to. It, it works good sometimes. If some people have, you know, in the beginning, they'll have a bunch of, like the way we saw down here, where it's like, you know, the track, then the artist, and then, you know, whatever information. You can this tag, that tag, that to the right location. All right? Um, we have the refresh select tags. I'll get into this when I get into Serato, why this is so useful. This is like a really, really great script to have. In fact, this script was the whole reason why I discovered Doug scripts. Um, there's a link to this script inside my first video, and again, I'll post links to all these um, on my website once the video is over with. 
Um, so check that out. And then, you know, you can just explore, find a stuff that works out for you, and um, take it from there. Right? So we have our we have our tracks that they're they're tagged correctly. The way you want them tagged, um, they're cleaned up, they're tempoed out and everything, they're good, right? So what's the next step? Scripts. Now we're ready for Serato, right? So we need to leave this open and close this. I'm going to close this out. And um, anybody have any questions? Um, I, for, for the uh, for the one stop DJ shop, I'll post the link to the um, the other guy's tag system in my um, in a cutting room, and I'll, I'll send you a message privately so you can see what it is. Um, but uh, I forget the dude's name um, right now. Um, the Apple scripts. Do I have any? Yeah. Um. The uh, that. That a pen selected tag can go to ooh, everything genre. All these scripts can edit every single field, right? It's not any field specific. So search and replace, you can search place genre. So I can change, like, for example, some people have these tracks like, um, like this. Like hip hop, like that, right? I'll go here to um, search and replace, and I want to change hip hip hop to hip hop. Proceed. Done. Right. I also want to take out this little slash and place it with a dash. Proceed. Done. Right. This is only working on the tracks that you select, so you can select all of them. You can select just one. You can select a couple. Just grab them and then run your little script. Right. Hope that answers your question. So use the append. Ah. Um. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know why it isn't a. Uh, I don't use this append selected tag script so much. I'm still new to it. So if I want to find out an answer, I'll let you got I'll let you know. I'll hit you up independently and um, answer that question for you. All right. You guys can also hit me up on Twitter if you need to at DJ High Def. Um, you ask me a question, it'll pop up right here on my little notifications tab. So if I'm not answering questions, I'm not getting to you. Um, just post it there, and um, I'll answer your questions as we go along. All right. Now, since we um, ran through iTunes, right? We know where to put our music at, how to sort it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't finish with iTunes. So, yeah, so those are the new music. These are the stuff from Record Pools. Blogs, you can set it so if you have a particular blog you like to go to, um, you can put them in there. I use Mebby all the time. It's a great source for new music, for reviewing new music. So, check it out. It'll give you links to some, um, some pretty badass tracks, you know, and I'll keep you up to date on stuff like that. Um, then you have your ideas. If you have ideas for mixtapes or routines, whatever you can make in there. But again, it's all whatever you like. The main, uh, the main one was the new music folder, right? So we had that down. Um, next, let's go into Serato. Let's run Serato. So I'm gonna run Scratch Live. Serato DJs out. I use it. I use Scratch Live mostly. I'm more comfortable with Scratch Live for now. Um, but all of these things I'm talking about work in work the same way for each system. Um, so whatever you like, whatever you're used to using, use that. As you can see, while this is loading up, I don't have any crates. I have one crate in my prep folder, but besides that, I don't have any other crates inside of my library, right? Um, that's because I use iTunes for my crates, right? Now, I'm going to take a quick pause. I forgot one thing, um, uh, one, one important thing. Um, the uh, my my special tagging system. I use a hashtag system, right? Well, my hashtag system is is basically so. Um, 
inside of my grouping tab, I put a hashtag, right? I put a hashtag for whatever feeling, whatever, you know, whatever thing I want that track to be. So, for example, um, my FF stands for female friendly, like, you know, lady tracks to get them on the floor, right? I just started using it, so it's kind of empty. But um, let's just say I want to play some East Coast stuff. Here's my East Coast stuff. Right now, it's, it's, it's empty. I just redid all these things, so all my tags are not as robust as they once were, but you kind of get the idea. If I want to do some, oops, some, I don't know, big room, some Becky stuff, some twerk stuff. Let's see, hashtag. He's all my hashtags right here. I'm still growing it. Um, DJ tools. So like acapella loops, you know, that I have my scratch, scratch, scratch samples, things like that. Segways, transitions, you know, for my SP6 sample player. Up tempo, twerk stuff, you know, whatever you want, wedding stuff. These are just so that when you're playing, you can find whatever tracks you're looking for faster. So like, all right, I'm about to, you know, drop in, you know, this one instrument. I want to scratch this same acapella I always use over it. So I'm gonna do a hashtag scratch, all right? And whatever that sample is, I think this is a. The president describes her horrible It's a YouTube rip. She was traded for smoke. Red Cross is helping those families. All right or. You know, whatever I need for that particular time. So that hashtag system, um, I, I like it a lot. It helps you keep yourself organized. I know a lot of DJs use something similar to that. Um, I like it. It works for me. Hopefully, it works for you too. All right. So, all right, let's go. Let's go back into back into Serato. So, all right, in Serato, I have my iTunes, which is right here. Manage my Serato library. Right. The reason why I do that is for a couple different reasons. Um, um, one, Serato reads um, your iTunes music. So in the settings, it is right. Read iTunes library. Right. Um, so by keeping my Serato crates in the iTunes, I don't have to worry about my iTunes folder getting corrupted or messing up. On top of that, sometimes I'll fill up a folder in my crates and I want to put in my iPod or my phone, I want to listen to what's in my crate. Um, I can't export my Serato crates to my I, my iDevices, so by having it in iTunes, it makes it so that I can always listen to everything that's on my computer all the time, right? I love it. It works great for me. You can just work for you. Um, I recommend it. Also, um, in, the, in the unfortunate case that your system crashes, let's say your, your main OS crashes, I can take this drive and replace it with the secondary drive, and all my stuff, my crates and everything, are still on this drive because it's all managed through iTunes. Follow me? Um, I'm currently working on a system where I have this little mini drive. Do I have it on here? I don't have a, a key to take it out. I have this thing. So this little mini drive system. Um, it's great. The guys in the cover room heard me talking about it. Um, basically, it's a little micro, S, micro SD card adapter that fits flush into your Mac like this. It looks just like that. Um, I have a, a high-speed 32 gigabyte um, SD card installed in that with a second copy of OS X, you know, my operating system. So just in case, you know, unfortunately I'm at a club, you know, oh, oh crap, you know, my computer crashes. I can't boot back up. I'll boot onto this little drive and then still run my iTunes off of this and be back up and running in no time. So it's almost like having a secondary computer-ish. It'll protect you against software fa software failures, but not hardware failures. So take a look at that. Um, if you have any questions about that, hit me up. Actually, about that, I'll try to answer them um, the best way I know how. All right. So anyway, so... Here's my Serato library. Now, um, here are my crates. You know, tools, which is empty right now. I have to fill those up. Wow. Did I not fill those up already? Oh, wow. I'm slacking on that. But anyway, so you have tools and security drops and stuff like that. Your loops, your SP6, you know, piss breaks, whatever. Um, your scratch folders, same thing. You know, scratch, scratch acapella songs that, like, acapellas you constantly scratch to, or your YouTube rips. Like, um, 
like the sweet brown YouTube rip. Oh, pop, 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 no, Lord Jesus, no, 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 Lord. You know, stuff like that. That's where you would put that at. I think I have a break it bad one. But let's start with some tough love. Right? Now, those are cool things to kind of play around with. Um, anyway, so let's go to press play. This is my main um, DJ folder. This is where I keep everything at. Right? Um, same thing is in here. This is where I make all my changes in, in iTunes, and I just play it in Serato. Serato I only use to play with. It's only my uh, my application I use to DJ with, I don't really manage music in iTunes like that. I use, I mean, in a uh, Serato like that. I use iTunes for all that stuff. Anyway, so I have my um, club, my dance, my top 40, my deep house, Latin, yada, yada, yada. You guys can make whatever genres you normally play. If you're more open format guy, you got multiple genres like me. You use this. If you are kind of like a one lane DJ, you just use, what you, use whatever you feel comfortable using. Um, Let's go into my urban folder, right? So I have hip hop, R and B, and some up tempo stuff. I put twerk in a separate folder. Um, inside of here, I have open, current, previous, and throwbacks playlists. These are, you know, a playlist from the night I did a club, and it was a really good night. So I saved that playlist to play at another time, right? You can do it. It's, it's basically exporting your history files to a to a playlist folder. You do that here, history, click that, and just go to export. You can export it to Serato or export it to a CSV file, or whatever. But just export your history file, put it into a, a playlist, and um, save it in iTunes so you have access to it when you need it. Um, I recommend doing this for like really big events, with like New Year's and things like that, so you can you can save that for a later date, right? Anyway, so um, the way I do my my folders or my crates in Serato is I name them. Right, I name them by the first song in that crate, and I keep my crates 25 songs deep. Right, 20 up to 25 songs deep. I do this because unfortunately, Serato doesn't have a tab where we can sort by the last time you played a track. You know, so I can say, all right, these are all my hip hop songs, but is this song still popular? Is this song still popular? Is this song still current? Um, if I go ahead and do things this way, I can say, all right, this is 25 songs in, next one, next one, next one. All right, well, most of my sixth crate, are the songs in the first um, crate still as popular? No, then I'll move it to my previous crate. And I'll do that in here. So. i move this down to my previous. So I'll always have my, uh, I'll always have a history of what was in that crate that particular time. If I want to, I can just select the current on the top and it selects all the songs in this entire folder. Right? I can go to previous and so on and so forth. This is great for me because I don't like deleting crates. I've deleted crates so many times and I've always regretted it. This way I can keep all my crates at all times and not have to worry about okay, what did I play? I don't know, what was what's the throwback now? You know what I'm saying? What's that one track I played last year? But you know, oh man, I forgot it, you know, what what's the groove, you know, so this works out for me. That way, again, you can do things whatever way you want, whatever way works for you. Um, this was this is what works for me. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Nope. Okay. Um, let's see. Went over. Where's my mind is that? Mm, the hashtag six nine. Went over that combo playlist. So. Um, I think I was watching a, a Will I Am video one day, and he was talking about DJs making playlists, and he was like, "How it's not recommended? You know, you don't want to get into that kind of stale, stagnant mode where you're just going next song, next song, next song, next song." And I, you know, I completely agree with him. Um, one thing though that I want to note is there are tracks that we play in combos, like a three-song combo. I think he he mentioned that um, three songs are okay. Anything more than that, because the playlists don't do it. So I started thinking like, all right, you know, there's some tracks. That you know, I do play every single time. Like I always play Children's Story. Then this is how we do it by Slick Rick. Then Poison. You know, I always play those trick, those three tracks. It's like what I do. So how can I make that easier for me? Well, I could put them in a playlist, but then I have to sort through and find that 
you know, that particular playlist and play it there. But how can I get all three of these songs to pop up, you know, so that I can quick mix throughout them, you know? What I did was I made um, combos. And the way your combos work is you go into, let's see, so I'll go to here. So, right? So, you see, I just typed in children's story, or whatever, you know, children's story, and all my combo songs popped up, right? Well, how, how is that possible? Well, if I pull it up in iTunes, You can see I put the other tracks in the comment field, so it makes it searchable. So anytime I pull up one of these songs, it'll pull up those other two songs too. You get it? So like Children's Story has these two tracks in it. If I pull up This Is How We Do It, Children's Story is in there. So anytime I search for Children's Story, this song will pop up too, and all the rest of these songs will pop up too. So if I'm doing quick mixing, I can just type in one song and all three of my songs are in there. So I don't have to worry about searching and put a prepare folder. It's just there, next song is there, next song there, is next song. You know, I can mix through all three of those songs in like a minute as opposed to searching and mistyping, searching and mistyping. It's all right there. Um, this is invaluable for me. Um, this works so well. Um, I love it. Again, you can use it if it works for you. If not, you know, understandable. But um I like it and I recommend it. So those are oh, those are combos. Um, what else? Okay, refreshing your library. So some of you guys will have the issue where all right, I'll make an edit. So I'll find this song, right? And I'll I'll put like hashtag no Celine in it. It's in there. And then I'll close Serato. And I expect all my changes need to be saved. You know, I ain't gotta worry about it. if I need to find it, it's in there, right? Let me open up iTunes and hashtag sleep. Nothing. Well, where's my edit at? Where's my, where's my, uh, uh, you know, where's that change at? Well, let's go back into, let's go back into Sarah. Let's see what, what happened to it. Um, you need to commit the changes you make. Whenever you make a change in Serato, Serato is passive, it's not aggressive, so it'll search, it'll pull its its file from iTunes. So if the change is not in iTunes or it's not saved to the ID three tag, the ID three tag, it won't load it up. It doesn't mean it's not there. It just it didn't it, it, it doesn't remember it. So let's see if it's actually in here. I don't think it is. I think I just screwed myself. Yep. So we'll pull what was that song? Nana. I don't know, whatever. We'll pull another track, so. Mm. We'll pull Top of the Road, right? So I'm going to take this track. I'm going to go ahead and put hashtag Selene on it. And that's it. You see how I wrote the tags? Now I'll load it up. I'll load up another track. And see how I wrote the tags again? And then I load it back and wrote the last song's tags. So now that save is committed. So now I'll go here to iTunes and I'll go to top of the world. So this one is one of these original mixes, right? So where is it at? You see if I play this one? And there's my edit. I have to refresh that particular song or tell iTunes to relook at that file, you know, so it can pull this this new update. If I was to take it out of this, let's see. Scratch Live still sees it, so I need to tell us to tell Scratch Live to relook at it. One way I can tell them to relook at it is if I take it and I reanalyze it, or if I just load it up, well, load that, load that back. Now it's gone. So when you guys don't see your save, your your changes being committed, that's why. Um, anytime I make changes, I try to make them in iTunes because Serato will read the iTunes folder and keep that up to date before anything else. So it refreshes itself every time it loads up. Another way to do it is there's a script called Refresh Selected Text. So if I did make this edit.
All right, make sure it's committed it. And I'll just go here and I'll select all my songs, whatever songs I'm, I did, and I'll just go to refresh. And see, right there, it refreshed it and it pulled the changes that I made. Um, this is it, is, is a crazy, crazy invaluable script. Um, we make changes in Strato as you go along, interviews in iTunes. It doesn't always refresh up, up to date itself. By running this little refresh tag, let's say once before I go DJ or something like that, um, it'll make sure all my tags are legit and in both systems. So take a look at that, see how that may work for you, and um, go ahead and use that. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Make sure nothing else popped up. All right, cool. Um, next one is um, refreshing. Reading I to uh, yep, iTunes folder over that. Um, and I think that's about that's about it as far as um, my workflow goes to get everything set up from me downloading the song to me getting ready to play a song, you know, in whatever environment I'm playing it at. These are all my songs from that I just downloaded today by date. They're right there. The key is not there, so I'll select all of them. And either, if I was, let's, let's just say I select all of them, I can either take it and drag them all into the Analyze Files tab, and I'll analyze them, or I can just click it, and whatever songs that have not been analyzed will be analyzed, right? You always want to analyze your, your, your songs before you play. It'll load them up into Serato's little memory file, whatever, the database file. So when you do play them, they're not taking a, a whole day to load. The overview, the overview is already built. See how fast that is? So you make sure you do that. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, so that that's basically you know my start to finish process. Um, I wasn't gonna go over the B grids, but I'll cut that short due to time. Um, Serato has an excellent article on editing your B grids, so take a look at that. It's on their Serato blog. A um, couple things I want to go over before I end this is um, configuration and stuff like that. So um, I have uh, two SSDs on my um, on my computer. Before I had them in a RAID configuration, which is basically both of the hard drives were linked together and acted as if they were one hard drive, which made my computer ridiculously fast, um, faster than I needed it to be. I think I ran 800 megabytes. You know, give or take read write speed. Um, these this computer now is not set up in a RAID configuration. The reason why I do that is like when I told you before, if the OS crashes, it doesn't affect my music. Um, two, when you have a RAID configuration on your laptop, it will disable certain app Apple uh, features. One of the big ones is the back to my um, the define my Mac feature. So if you lose your Mac and you have a RAID configuration, you can't track it. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure it's uh, two hard drives and um, have that feature on. Right? Again, use what you want, whatever you think is best. But I did it before, and then when my stuff got stolen, I couldn't track it. So it was like, well, you know, damn. Um, lesson learned, right? Next thing is um, the scripts. Again, I got all my scripts from um, Doug's. Apple scripts. So check him out. You know, big shout out to him. Um, he's doing God's work for us. So if you're using iTunes to manage your music, you can find a bunch of stuff that'll help you better manage, you know, or, or add functionality to your workflow. Right? So LuxApplescripts.com and he has a bunch of stuff there, so go check him out. Um, next um, backups. So I have this backup program called Carbon Copy Cloner, right? I love it. It's it's amazing, right? They have a, um, I think it's thirty bucks now. Before it was free. The free version is still on their website. You can download the free version. I use the free version. You know, I don't need the most up to date version. It's it's unnecessary for me. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a great backup program. I don't use Time Machine. The problem I have with Time Machine is that it backs it up to a Time Machine file. 
So if I need to go back into my backup and pull a file or, or um, manually you know, do my backup, I can't. I need Time Machine. It's proprietary. And I'm not really cool with that. I want more control over my own backups. Carbon Copy Cloner makes an exact replica of whatever it's copying to whatever it's copying. So if I select my my uh, my main drive, it'll back up the files to another file, right? I'm not going to do this, but it'll tell you what it's doing, how does it handle it, yada, yada, yada. You can also schedule a task. Well, cancel. Turn this off. Um, you can schedule tasks. I have my... Make my OS back up here and then my music back up here. I misspelled that. Whatever. Um, and those are set to run automatically when the hard drive is connected. So to kind of show you how that works is right now I'm going to plug in my backup hard drive. And as soon as I plug it in, it'll load it up. First, it'll scan and make sure it's there. It'll load it up and the backups will automatically start. So right before I go to bed, I'll just plug this thing up, and it'll do its thing, right? One side is backing up my OS. The other side is backing up my music folder. So any songs that I downloaded or anything that changed since then are now being copied over, right? And this is where they're being copied to, full backups. My OS backup and then my music backup. And as you can see, they're exact duplicates of uh, here's my music folder, here's the music backup. Same thing. And you can look at the folders and everything. Right? This is the song we just did today. Tell you how much it copied over, what's done, no errors, yada yada yada, it was good. Okay to close. And this one's copying my my OS. So that's gonna take its time. Right? Um, is there anything else you need to go over? Um, two more things. I keep this little reminders program. This is built into every Mac, but I keep it open in the background of Serato while I'm playing, so that um, if I want to remind myself to download a track or to, to look something up, I'll put it in here. This is great. You know, sometimes when you're playing at a club, and I'm like, all right, oh man, I don't have this song. Let me go home and download it. And I'll try to write it down, or I'll try to put it someplace, but I always forget. So by having this open in the background, I can just pull it up, jot it down real quick, and then um, keep it moving. At the end of the night or the next morning, I can go back and look over my notes and say, all right, you know, make sure you get this these things taken care of. And it, it'll work out for me, you know. All of from stuff from, like, you know, change something in Ableton, make an intro edit, do this, do that, yada, yada, yada. Um, they work really well. I mean, the program works really well. Um, it syncs to my phone and everything, so I recommend it. Uh, the last thing I want to kind of go over is this last little script I have called DJ Mode, right? So let's pull up Automator. Document. Where is my DJ Mode? So DJ Mode, what it does is it basically it quits all my applications, mutes my volume, and launches Scratch Live. So if I have like something running in the background, like a, a web browser or iTunes or whatever I have, you know, it'll make sure it quits everything. Um, I'm not going to run it right now because if I run it, you know, the, the webcast is going to get canceled. But um, basically you get the idea of what it does. Um, this is another automation. So you know, take a look at that. You know, see how you can use Automator to better help your workflow. They do um, a thousand different things, and there's a bunch of online utilities out there to help you add more automation features to your computer. So, take a look at that. You know, um, it's great. Um, it'll help you out. Help me out a bunch. So I highly, I, I recommend it. Let's see, what we got B grids. So you're saying it shows up for you in Scratch Live, not in Serato DJ. Hmm. Let's see. I tried to make this little thing underneath an hour. They're already running into an hour and 20 minutes. 
But um, if it helps you guys, then I'm happy. Again, if you guys have any questions after this webcast, you know, you can post them in the video comments, or you can hit me up online. My Facebook is facebook.com slash DJ High Def. Most of you guys are friends with me. Um, if not, um, you can post them in the cutting room, send me an email or something like that, contact at djhighdef.com. You know, shoot me a like or something like that. Um, and I'll try my best to kind of go over everything that I, that, um, if you have any questions. But um, B grids. So, uh, I'm kind of resting on editing my B grids. But basically, um, you, you should be able to see them both in both programs. Um, they don't recommend opening up. Also, showing up as Scratch Live, but not Serato DJ. Okay. Backup's done. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. That, that that's a weird one. Um, I know we had a guy, Jake, who had the same problem. He was saying he needs to update his software or something like that. So check which versions you're running on Serato, on uh, Serato DJ and Scratch Live, because that may affect it. You know, if anything, you can post it up in the Serato forums. Because I'm not exactly too sure why it does that. Um, so sorry I couldn't be more of a help to you, but I'll, I'll look into it. You send me some screenshots of exactly what's happening. I'll see if I could um, answer that on the side. All right. If anybody has any other questions, um, feel free to hit me up. Let me know, and I'll try to answer them as you know as they come. Um, the website will be active. There's a contact link on my website. It should be right here in a little form, or you can just kind of hit me up and see exactly what you need. Um, let me know what you need, and I'll try to be as much help as possible. Again, you know, a big shout out to you know a lot of you guys help me out with this. Shout out to One Stop DJ Shop. You know, you guys um, supporting DJs, DJs helping DJs. Shout out to the Sardo Control Vinyl Collectors Group. You guys are amazing. You know, shout out to Rain. Shout out to Serato themselves. Shout out to the Crane Stand. You know, too many, too many to list. But um, the whole, the whole reason why I'm doing this is to help out everybody else. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting anything from this. I get no incentive for doing this. I do this because there's not enough, not a lot of, not enough DJs out there willing to take the time to go out of their way to help out another DJ. So you know, when I was starting, no one kind of showed me these things. So I figured if I can give back to you guys, then you know. That will just improve the community. So, again, if you guys have any questions, contact me. Let me know. I'll be sure. I'll be. I'll be happy to help. And um, keep on rocking. You know. That's all I got. Um, you guys enjoy your rest of your day. And um, I'll. I guess I'll see you when I see you. All right.